All right, let's find us an artist here. See what we come up here. All right, Peter Doig in the studio. Here we go. does have a nice studio. I'll give him that. Lots of space. Peter Doig relocated from Trinidad to London. So this is his new studio in London. Just for the heck of it, we're going to take a side trip and we're going to find out who this guy is. I'm going to come up here to uh, chat GPT. Give me a brief description of the painter. His name was Doig. Scottish painter, known for his enigmatic and visually captivating work. He was born in 59 in Scotland. He's renowned for the use of vibrant colors. They have a dream-like quality in their exploration of memory and nostalgia. He, per he uh, draws on personal experience, photographs, film stills. He's been recognized as one of the most important contemporary painters and has received numerous accolades. His unique approach to painting and his distinctive visual language have made him a significant figure in the art world. All right. He does got some big paintings here. Let's get to work here, buddy. Just... My usage really um, also allowed me to um, to do my my film club in there as well. These two spaces, probably each about five thousand square feet, quite dusty, um, not too far from what's known as La Basse, which is the um, the town dump basically, where they burn lots of. All right, I see a lot of jars. Well, let's see what he's written here. Fernando Studio painting portrait. I guess he takes that's the back of a canvas, looks like. So I do write information on the back of my canvases as well. I put my email address and all that kind of good stuff on the back, mainly contact information. What's he got here? White new mineral spirits, I guess. Looks like some varnish. That's not a very good painting there. I hope he can do better than that. Poor kid, doesn't even have a nose. Bug eyes, yellow hair, no nose. Tells me he's a modern artist, contemporary. A famous contemporary. Oh, here we go. Peter Doig self-portrait. Well, I gotta tell you, contemporary art is just silly. I'm sorry, I'm telling you, it's just silly. So what do we have here? I know these guys make a lot of money, but look at this, this painting over here. I mean, did they even learn how to draw? I know contemporary art is all about not having any skill at all, and that's why you see this. The uh, 
postmodernist contemporary view is de skill, no skill, lack of skill. You're looking for other things texture, color, form, design. God forbid you draw something that looks like a person. Now that shows some skill. At least you've got some proportion going on. Evidently he doesn't like to draw faces. They are huge. I wish I could see how they're supported in the back canvas. I'm sure he's got a lot of braces. They look pretty tight. There we go. There, there's a view of the backside. There's the crate. I wish I could see the back of the painting though. There's one of his books. Right there. Let's resume. Hmm. Yep, it's all about uh, dismantling reality. You don't want a person to look like a person. You could draw him with three legs if you wanted to, and the contemporary art world would love it. I mean, look at that. Is there anything at all interesting about that face or about the treatment of paint? I don't get it. One of the most renowned artists at work today and his work looks like crap. I mean, look at that. I do like the green work. I do like the, uh, the background. I like the background texture, but this figure and this god awful red it clashing with the orange through the center of the piece, it's just. I know he's wanting this to really vibrate, this red, when you stick it up against these uh, other colors, this black and this orange, it's gonna make this red really vibrate against the green because they're complementary colors. The green and red are complementary colors and so they fight off of each other, but still. That is one ugly painting. Oh, got a lion. Wonderful. All right, here's a look at a figure. I don't know what to make of that. Everyone's got their own opinion. I wish I had his studio, I know that. Well, let's listen in and see what kind of stuff they're talking about Exists here. within the painting really are spaces to do with painting itself and what comes about by painting and where, as a painter, you feel you can leave it and where, where it's giving off to me what I want, whatever that is. And that goes for painting a face or painting a space that may represent sky. It's not really a painting of sky or a painting of sea. I mean, for instance, in the Sokobo painting, this sort of kind of sort of fumy type sea at the bottom. Um, when I painted that, I'd never really intended to leave it like that. That would have just been part of it. Something that I'd gone back into work and probably just like left little elements of it. But 
when the painting came to London, there'd been this sort of passage of time, I realized that I was never gonna be able to recreate that. And it actually had something that maybe I didn't realize at the time. Okay. Well, I'm not too sure. I know I'm pretty much from the old school and a lot of this contemporary art is rather silly. Some of his work though I like. All right, there's a good shot of the frame. I want to go back and take a look at how he's got these things framed up and supported in the back because they look really taut. All right, right there. He's got a, aluminum braces. You'll notice with a pretty hardwood frame. And that may that may not be canvas or if it is, it's canvas that's been glued to aluminum. This may be an aluminum sheet. Looks like aluminum. So he's taken I've done this on a smaller scale where you take canvas and glue it to aluminum. And then when you get to a certain size, you have to start bracing it to keep it from bending and warping. So I'm guessing it's canvas on aluminum. I have no way of knowing for sure. All right, over here we're talking about some stuff here. Let's see. Sort of wanton or um, flailing or sort of, I don't know, gratuitous in a way. And I thought that was, uh, that to me seemed to be <coughs> really important about the type of painting that I like. I mean, apart from that, I think that's probably everything that you need to know about painting or can learn from painting in that room as well. So many different uses of the material. If you look at, uh, I don't know, for instance, the Renoir painting with a small figure in the kind of field, it's kind of like there's sort of abstract qualities and sort of blurring of paint that uh, predates artists by a hundred years or whatever. And then there's sort of devices in the Manet painting, for instance, that um, I think are really, really important about how um, a painting kind of operates for optically for the viewer, you know, with the two sort of very sharp globes of um, electric. Yeah, but look at uh, Manet's treatment of the face compared to Doig's. What he's looking at are these blobs of paint in the background and all the abstract impressionist use of brushwork and is going to downplay, I'm sure he's going to downplay any sort of features of the face or at least he doesn't uh, in his paintings. Light and then the softness the, and other parts. The use, the use, the, the there's, there's so many, so many different things to learn from and you know, Cezanne of course with um, his small brush, everything that he, he was doing with that brush and um, just the importance of um, the material is so, is, is, is so evident in his work. And, and yet you feel a kind of a, a warmth for the subject. Um, you don't feel that it's just a sort of uh, academic exercise in any way. It feels like he's connected to what he's painting, but it's not sentimental in a way. So I think there's a lot, a lot to, to learn, but also a lot to enjoy, really. And Okay, so definite, he's definitely a impressionist from the impressionist mode, leaning toward abstraction. He does have some representational quality. I mean, when you look at uh, a boat or a figure, you know what it is. He's just taking it and broken it down, changed it, which is fine if you like that kind of stuff. And some of it I like, it just depends on how it's been treated. A little bit will go a long way. I've seen a lot of orange in his work, have you noticed that? How much orange? and red and green shows up. Now there's a face that he's done a halfway decent job on right there. At least it's got 
some proportionality going on. So I think he's fully aware of what he's doing and he can show the skill when he wants to, he just doesn't want to. And I guess there's a lot of freedom in that. You don't have to worry about proportion. You don't have to worry about uh, All right, I guess we're done.